Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to run through a quick build of the Tamiya Sand Scorcher body. We won't be going into all the details, we're just going to do enough to make it look like a sand scorcher so we can work out how to paint it and have a think about the possibility of some lights. The body starts at step 23 where Tamiya wants us to paint the shell. So we can put the shell off to one side and get on with step 24, the exhaust. We need the exhaust parts, P12, 13 and 15, three M2x6s and three U-stays, which are just thin metal straps. The exhaust parts are meant to be glued together, but since this build is really just to see how it all looks, we're just going to plug the bits together. The fit is good enough that they should stay put. To fit the exhaust, we position it in the rear cage and use the straps. They're very thin, so they easily wrap around the cage bars, and we use the M2 screws to clamp them up and thread them into the holes in the exhaust. There's really not much to set the position of the exhaust, so start by loosely fitting the straps, then once it's found where it wants to go, tighten them up. There's some metal aftermarket exhausts available, which do look rather interesting. Also, there's a couple of false engines to cover up the gearbox too. There's a good few options to think about. Okay, step 25, nose, windows and tail. Before we start adding bits to the shell, we're going to clip out the sprue from the sunroof hole. We just need to use some cutters to cut it free. It's going to end up being covered by the sunroof, so it doesn't matter too much if the edges are a little bit rough. For screws, we need a 3x10 self-tapper, a 3mm washer, 10 2x6s, 2 M2 nuts, and 5 2mm washers. We need quite a few plastic bits. There's the front panel, P16, the rear number plate light housing, P9, the left and right tail lights, P7 and 8. There's of course lots of other bits here too, but we'll get to those after we paint it. For chrome, we need two Q2s to headlight buckets. And again, we'll get to all the other bits a bit later. Light buckets first, they just offer up to the front panel and they just drop straight in with a little tiny post near the edge which lines up with a hole to get the angle. Then from the inside, we use a two by six on each side. Quite nice, but the screw right in the middle is going to make adding an LED a bit of a challenge. We could use a surface mount LED and some thin wire, but the light wouldn't be very focused. Or there are some odd shaped through hole LEDs that might work too. Short lenses, but with a wide leg pitch that could just about straddle the screw hole. It's going to take a bit of thought. The rear lights offer up to the rear wings and get fitted with more of those 2mm screws, but this time we use a washer too. They're moulded in white plastic, which will make it really difficult to add LEDs. We might be able to mod the parts, cutting the red portion away and making a clear replacement, fiddly but doable, or there's some 3D printed alternatives, but it'll always look a little bit rough. Again, more thought required. The number plate light housing uses another 2mm screw. This bit would be really easy to add a light to. It just needs a couple of small SMD LEDs glued in. The windows are one piece, quite a large piece. On the same parts tree, there's the headlight and tail light lenses too, but we'll leave them there until we need them. To fit the windows, they just drop into the shell and we use three more of the 2mm screws. It's worth noting you don't want to go too crazy doing these ones up. Partly so you don't strip out the holes, but also because the clear plastic can be prone to cracking if the screws are done up too tight. The trick is to nip them up so they're just snug, and if the windows don't wobble, it's good to go. To fit the nose, we need to slide it in between the front arches. It's quite tight, so we'll probably fit it and then glue it in before we actually get to the paint. If we do it after the paint, then the thickness of the paint is going to make it really difficult to slide in. To attach, we use the 3mm self-tapper in the middle. Then on the sides, we use a 2mm screw and nut. They're a bit tricky to line up, so some tweezers does help quite a bit. Nip them up, and that's the nose fitted. Step 26, driver, mirrors, and the rear body mount. 
Now a lot of this step we're going to skip for the dry build. The driver gets glued in so we can't do that just yet and the mirrors are going to get lost when we do a test run so we'll keep them safe for the time being. What we can do is the rear mount. So we need the two parts of the mount, two M3 by 20s, two M3 nylock nuts and two M3 washers. Then for plastic we need two P14 spacers. To fit we need the two screws with the washers under the heads. They go through the holes in the back of the body shell just above the rear window. On the inside we add the P14 spacers, the big bit of the mount, then the small bit, and to keep them in place we use the two nylocks. All clearly filmed with my awesome camera skills. <laughs> well, at least you can kind of see what's going on when we tighten up the nuts. It's quite a nice design, except for the great big screw heads on the outside of the shell. They look terrible. It would be nice to have a flush finish, but being the rear body mount, they could end up seeing quite a bit of force applied to them. We could try and 3D print something that glues on the inside to spread the load, then fill the holes. Or maybe keep things simple, we could just change the screws for something a bit nicer. Some stainless dome headed screws perhaps. Alright, step 27, the sunroof and fitting. Now there's not much to do with this one. We're going to glue in the sunroof so it's very dry by the time we get to the painting. All we do is clip it free from the parts tree. Do a test fit, remembering there's a pin on one side that matches up with the shell. Then remove it and add some plasti weld around the lip on the shell. A bit around the pinhole and a spot on the sides. Now the sunroof can drop in. Make sure it's in the right spot and add some weight while it hardens. Leave it an hour or so, so it's not going anywhere. Now we can flip the shell over and add a spot in the corners just to make sure it's stuck all the way around. When we get to it, I think we're going to skim it with some filler and smooth it out. It shouldn't need too much filler as being a Tamiya, it's already quite a good fit. Next there's a body clip, just the one. We need to grab the loop with some pliers and bend it. If we leave it flat, it's going to be just about impossible to remove without damaging the paint. Having said that, I am thinking it was probably a good idea to get another one of these aluminium posts. Then we can modify it and make a magnetic mount for the front. To fit the body to the chassis, we line up the top of the post with the hole in the bonnet, just roughly. Spin the buggy round to make sure the rear mount is lined up with the roll bar and press it down. Then back at the front we clip in the body clip over the end of the post. It looks fairly tidy, but I do think an invisible mount would be even better. Either way, for now we have enough of the sand scorcher put together to get a good feel for how it looks. I don't think I'm going to go for the box art with this one, but probably stick with the blue and the white. Maybe not quite the same blue though. Okay, and that's going to be it for this week. Sand Scorcher is rolling, just the paint and the battery to go. As always, thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!